All right, so I'll call the uh, uh, Horse Racing Committee uh, public meeting of October 7, 2020 to order. Uh, again, I will uh, uh, just have a brief, uh, quick announcement uh, regarding this meeting. Uh, given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global pandemic, Governor Baker issued an order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health and safety of individuals interested in attending public meetings. In keeping with that order, the committee will convene this meeting using remote collaboration technology. There are a few considerations I'd like to note before we begin. First, all votes will have to be taken by roll call. So I will ask each member of the committee to register their vote, if any, individually. Secondly, I'll ask that everybody except the committee members to please mute themselves to help keep background noise to a minimum. And third, just to notice to everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Otherwise, the meeting will proceed in its ordinary course. So what I'll do is call on the members uh, to uh, identify themselves as being present. So Commissioner Cameron. Uh, I am here. Uh, Attorney Katunuk. Here. And Attorney Goldberg. Present. Okay. And Brian Fitzgerald. Okay. Uh, we will move on with respect to the agenda in terms of the second item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes for the July 15th, 2020 meeting. Uh, those were in the package uh, for you as a pre-read. Uh, and I just would ask, have all of the committee members had an opportunity to review those minutes? I yes, have. I all right. Are there any comments or questions or uh, corrections to be made to those minutes? No, sir. No. Okay. I think they're fine as well. Well done. I think they're great too. So, um, is there a motion to approve with the authority to correct any misspellings or clerical errors? So moved. Okay. I'll second. second. Oh, Jenks. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So moved. So I'll take a roll call vote. Attorney Katunik. Aye. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Attorney Goldberg. Aye. And Fitzgerald is aye. Mr. Chairman, I think maybe we should also request. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask Mr. Umbrello. Yes, I was going to say well, thank oh, I, you. Yep, I did review them and, uh, and I accept them. I am okay with them. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda is just with respect to the um, uh, appointed thoroughbred representative to the uh, committee. So um, with that, um, uh, my understanding is that um, Mr. Umbrello is the uh, interim member of the committee on behalf of the association. And uh, Mr. Umbrello, I just ask if you just want to um, kind of uh, shed some light in terms of um, whether that appointment would be permanent for you or if there's uh, the plan that, that the uh, thoroughbreds have at this time. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, as I stated earlier, I am appointed by the board as the um, interim um, seat for this committee. And also, um, as stated earlier, I am currently um, reviewing two candidates to see if they're willing to come on as a, as a permanent fixture to this committee. So we're currently in those discussions um, right now. So I'm, I'm trying to see if someone wants to um, accept the position, then so be it. If not, I might be filling this position during the interim. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do any of the other members have any questions? No, oh, just welcome, Paul. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm excited, actually. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, <laughs> Paul. Thank you. Um, and then just as a side note, um, Emily, I just I guess I would just ask also if you just um, want to um, introduce uh, Liz in terms of 
Yeah, sure. So I am shortly to go out on parental leave, um, which is very exciting. Um, so the treasurer has named an alternate designee, um, to the county, which is Liz Zelnick, um, who is the deputy director of policy and legislative affairs for the treasurer. And Liz is on the call. Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Liz. Welcome. Okay. All right, so moving on with respect to the next item on the agenda, uh, item number four, review of updated uh, 2020 um, Racehorse Development Fund revenue. Uh, in your packets were the updated revenue from August um, in terms of the overall funds that have been uh, received uh, as of August 31st. Uh, obviously, as the committee members know, um, the uh, gaming licensees were closed for part of March, April, May, and June, and then they reopened in July. Um, I just wondered, has everyone had a chance to take a look at those revenue figures just to see where they're at at this point? Um, I just wanted to note, just as a point of comparison, I looked at the figures from August of 2019, which would have had, a, you know, all three of the uh, licensees uh, operating at that time. Uh, and the revenue that was collected into the fund at that point in time was about just over 1.5 million, uh, and for August of 2020, it was about 932,000, uh, just over that. So obviously, uh, as a result of the um, COVID-19 virus, it's uh, had a significant impact on uh, the revenues that are generated into the fund. So, uh, the reduced capacity of the licensees. So do any of the members have any comments or questions about the revenue figures? No question. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So moving on then, we'll move to item five. Um, in which uh, for the purposes of this meeting is essentially an agenda setting uh, discussion. Uh, so we can uh, talk about um, agenda items that we would have on our next scheduled meetings, um, as well as um, executive summary submissions and public comment deadlines. Uh, so I just wondered uh, if anyone had any thoughts in terms of um, our, um, you know, scheduling of the next meeting and moving forward with respect to next year, so. You know, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, one of the issues and questions, maybe for Dr. Lightbaum, that we always grapple with is, when do, when do we think the numbers, the figures, I know, you know, when, when racing closes, when can we expect to get the the, the metrics from 2020? Yeah, so um, Plain Ridge is the only track that's racing this year, and they end uh, the day after Thanksgiving. So uh, their live handle figures and all should be available um, pretty quickly, you know, and I would, I would think uh, we'd be able to have that information by the end of December. Um, most of the information on that um, memo that I do up that's horse racing in Massachusetts yeah. Most of those figures pertain to live racing, so um, we should be able to wrap that up in December. A couple of figures on um, like 1099s and W2s, the tracks may not have available um, until, you know, January, something like that. Um, I can certainly um, do the report up without those figures. Um, as far as uh, some of the um, handle information and all that comes out of our um, annual report, um, some of those figures, if they're, you know, like total simulcast handle and things like that, um, those numbers, you know, aren't done until um, the end of the year. And so, you know, again, it would probably be January or February before um, the tracks would be able to um, confirm with us all that information. Okay. Thank you. 
And Dr. Lightbound, would that be, do you think maybe mid-February, would that be kind of the timing? Bless you. Yeah, I mean, we it's possible maybe we could get it before then, but I think mid-February would be a good good place to aim for. And, and also, um, like we've done in the last several years is um, we get the pages of the annual report um, done that this committee um, uses. Uh, yeah. So that even though the annual report may not officially go in front of the commission, you know, till months afterwards, um, at least uh, those figures are available for the committee to use. For instance, you know, we, we don't do our first review with um, Plainridge until, you know, probably February, because um, that gives them time to get their information together and all. But we have um, unofficial um, numbers before them. And I take, I take it, Dr. Lightburn, from year to year, the unofficial numbers are pretty correct. This, when, when the official numbers right. come out months later, we're not talking any kind of differential variation. Exactly. And I don't even know if, if those particular numbers have changed any. You know, right. sometimes it's, uh, sometimes some of the budget numbers have changed or whatever, just for um, different ways of accounting. But um, the numbers for this committee have stayed the same. And, you know, this um, year, the numbers on the thoroughbred side are, um, you know, there's no racing, so there's not going to be a lot of numbers on the side of um, the thoroughbred racing to come up with. Uh, that's a good point, Dr. Leipom, that uh, Peter for... Um, so what I think what Peter, what you're getting to is we could use those unofficial numbers and feel pretty confident that um, that won't change when the official numbers are finally out. Is that your point? Uh, absolutely. You're correct. I want to make yeah. sure you know, we, we, no one wants to take their time and, you know, waste time uh, if the numbers are going to change dramatically. So right. if, they're, if they're not, then I think it's safe to say, you know, we can rely on them. Uh, to do our work, yeah. Correct, correct, yes. Correct. I know it's always our goal to um, to get the work done before the start of next year's racing season, correct? Correct. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Plain Ridge did put in the only application for racing for next year that we received. Those had to be in mm -hmm. by um, October 1st, and... Um, their schedule that they applied for has them going from um, mid-April, April 12th, um, through the uh, November 26th for 110 mm -hmm. days next year. Similar to this year, Dr. Exactly. Lightham. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same time period, same number of days. We can only yep. hope that they get the 110 days in this year. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So then with that, uh, do we um, want to think about, um, you know, scheduling a, a, a couple meetings in terms of in order? Uh, you know, this, this past year we, we had, a, we did have a um, uh, public comment meeting. And so I just kind of want to see from the committee members perspectives if they, um, would want to consider that again, having it again uh, next year, um, based on the the, the, the 2020 review, um, and uh, you know scheduling a meeting, you know more specifically for that public comment to take place, uh, and then later on scheduling another meeting to um, uh, review the executive summaries uh, for the 2020 year. Um, based on the criteria that we established this year, so. I, I think that makes a lot of sense to, to move in that direction. Um, I thought it was very helpful to have public comments last year, mm -hmm. or this year, rather. I would agree. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree as well. I think the public comment was, was, was helpful, if, if uh, informative. I think if we work, I think you're right, uh, 
Mr. Chairman, if we can work backwards and sort of figure out the series of meetings so that we can get our work done, you know, prior to the beginning of April or when racing starts, that'd be very helpful for everyone. I mean, the whole in, the whole industry and Commonwealth I think we'd be well served. So should we look at probably potentially scheduling something towards the end of February? Um, schedule a meeting or schedule uh, uh, a time for public comment, Public right? comment, First? public comment, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The numbers will be available, right? There's no reason um, not to move forward with that. So do we want to look at our respective calendars and mm -hmm. set a date then? Just for a public comment meeting? For public, for public comment. Public comment meeting where the people yeah. can sign up to give their opinions on yeah. the proposals or whatever. Uh, do, we, do we do that before? Executive summaries are done just as a public comment. I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I, I say I think we probably did it um, uh, the last time it was, uh, you know, um, I, I believe we had it before the executive summaries were were submitted. Correct. Perfect. Okay. I think uh, last year, Mr. Chair, if I may, the 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 initial purpose of the public comment was to get input on the new way to split the money. So they definitely were before the executive summaries, but this is a slightly different purpose. Equally as valid and it's still a great idea, but it's slightly different. So it could, you know, it could be whenever it would be helpful. And I guess I would defer to both uh, Attorney Goldberg and Mr. Umbrello in terms of your comments in terms of, you know, generating, you know, based on when the figures come in, um, having the time to submit your executive summary. So, so. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the question, but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I think, I think a public comments meeting is helpful executive summary date and then uh, maybe uh, then, a, then a, you know, a date to review them and, and take any right. votes that might be necessary. Um, you know, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe a meeting in, in the middle of February might be helpful okay. uh, even before public comment, Mr. Chairman, uh, to look at the numbers to sort of have a chance for Dr. Lightbaum and, and everyone, you know, all the numbers to sort of be, did, uh, disseminated out to us, maybe we could have it, maybe, maybe it's not necessary, I don't know. I think just a general discussion of what's out there and what numbers are available um, it might be helpful, I don't know. So, so if I recall, I think when we had the public comments, like the executive summaries was two weeks after, somewhere around that, if memory serves. I don't have it in front of me, but I mean, just looking at a calendar, doesn't it make sense to have the... I just lost it, sorry. I think the week of the 22nd, your public comments come in. Because that would what, be about one week after the numbers come in. And, and, and Peter, I'm not sure we need, we need the, the numbers. I think if the numbers just come in, we assess it. And then I think somewhere, I would say in mid-March, we have the executive, executive summaries submitted. And that still gives you a couple of weeks to get a meeting one or two weeks before the start of the, the standard bread season. So I was kind of like looking at two, two and two, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, the only, the only issue I would have Paul and the rest of the committee is, you know, when we, when we make a schedule with no wiggle room, it, it, it creates a problem, right? You know, as, as we've learned over the last year, uh, you always have to plan for, uh, you know, people testing positive and, and things happening. So, you know, uh, who, who knows what's going to happen moving forward in 2021. I think if we 
you know, plan on, if we work backwards and say, okay, executive summaries due mid-March, you know, meeting April 2nd, um, you know, we could run into an issue of, you know, Paul, you know, maybe, I don't know when you guys are going to appoint, if you're going to appoint a new person, you know, I, I, I just, I, you know, I hear in the future, well, the new person needs some time to get up to speed. And it, if something happens with the pandemic that slows us down, um, you know, I just hate, I hate to be pushed into June, July, you know, April, May, June, July, August, like as we have in the past. Um, so, and I'm, you know, obviously we can't do the meeting in December. We don't have numbers. I, I get that. But it, it looks like Dr. Lightbaum stated that, you know, the most information, most of the information we're going live racing will be available at the end of December, 1099s and W2s in January. Handle information in January, maybe into February. So it looks to me like most of the numbers will be available by the end of January. I'm not sure waiting until February 22nd um, is necessary for public comments. I just you know we, we. Oh, that's okay. That's sorry. I don't think public comments, well, they will depend on the, somewhat of the numbers. I don't think they're going to be a huge factor. And again, with wiggle rooms, I heard. I'm sorry, I didn't hear end of January from Alex. It's irrelevant. I mean, just look at the calendar and stop picking some dates. I just think you have to give some time to get the public comments, folks to digest them, then back that up or include that with your executive summary, and then give this committee enough time to submit and review. I honestly feel, I will speak candidly, that the last time we submitted and killed ourselves to put an executive summary together of 52 pages, folks had days to review those. And there was a significant amount of information in that. Um, so, so again, you want public comments, week of February 15th, that's a big, here we go, are we into school vacation week um, for folks? I don't have a, that school vacation in front of me because my kids are grown up, but. I think bottom line, why can't we get an executive summary done by the, the week of March 8th to the 12th? It still gives you three weeks. Isn't that really the, the crutch to the... My, my, that That's all great, Paul. I, I don't disagree with you whatsoever. I'm just saying looking at the last eight years of history, which is how a lot of times we, we, we uh, plan for the future, uh, we've come into we, we've 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 run into run into roadblocks that have caused delays. That's all. And I'm just saying we'd be smart to give us uh, as much time as possible, so that if we come into any kind of delay, we're not uh, we're, we're not left with five days to review a 52-page executive summary. I think, I think your point was well taken, Paul, that the, this committee does need adequate time to review these summaries in order to discuss them and discuss a, any potential uh, split alteration. So I, 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 it, does anybody else want to make a recommendation? Because I'm looking at my calendar and still think March 12th gives you into three weeks into the first week of April. There's plenty of fluff. Look ahead. What do you want? The 5th? Uh, it. So we're look trying to schedule, you know, the the, the timing of these uh, of these meetings. So um, and the, the timing of the submissions. So um, and I just want to defer to the two of you in terms of just the you know based on when the numbers come out. What sort of time period do you need, you know, to have, you know, the, the, the time to prepare your executive summaries in order to have them submitted for, for review? So does it make sense to, to, you know, is it the public comment period should be sometime in January? Should it be in February? You know, or um, Attorney Goldberg, do you have any? No, I, 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 I think, you know, public comment meeting, I, I think that's what we're proposing, right? A meeting for these public comments live 
Yeah, well, first, yeah, first the public comments, and then on the basis of that would then be a date for when the executive summaries would be submitted for review. And then the third item would be a, a meeting to review those executive summaries. So, so I would say end of January, as, as Mr. Umbrella suggested, February 5th might work fine. That, you know, the first week of February might work fine. And then with executive summaries due, um, even if it's three weeks later, you know, the, the, the third week. And if, if, if let's say January 31st, you had a public comment meeting and then February 22nd or something like that, you had the executive summary summaries due, we could then schedule a meeting for this committee to review the executive summaries. You know, if it's two weeks after that, it would be, uh, you know, the first, the second week of, of March, which is fine. You know, if we get stuck and we need to, you know, we haven't had a year yet where a meeting hasn't been rescheduled. So if we have to reschedule a meeting a week or three days or five days or two weeks later, then we have time where if something comes up, you know, with, with what's going on in the world now, who knows what's going to come up in February or March or, or November. We, we have no idea. Um, I just think it's be prudent to give us as much time as we can. It, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it matters to anyone here if we start in, you know, January 31st or February 5th. I mean, it's, it's, it's just prudent to start sooner. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's just get some dates on paper and go from there. Because I, I, I will admit whether I remain the interim um, um, member on this committee or like anything, have to uh, find a replacement. Um, it does take time to bring that individual if they have no, obviously, racing experience behind them, which is always a challenge for us. All right, so what are you saying, like the week of 5th for public comments and then executive summaries the week of the 26th of February? Do any of the other committee members have any comments on that timeline? I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fine as well. Attorney Goldberg? That, that it's, it sounds reasonable. All right, so the first item then is, is saying for the uh, public comment hearing. So when you're looking at the dates, then you'd have roughly the week of January 25th to the 29th or February 1st through the, fir through the 5th. So do we want to say Wednesday, the 27th of January? That works. That works for me. That works? Okay. Fine with me. Okay. All right. So That's Wednesday, the, the 27th of January then for a public comment meeting. And then I'm going to ask in terms of how the logistics of that meeting uh, were the committee members satisfied with the way that it was run this last spring with the timeline that we had for each of the parties? Because I do know that there was some confusion about having, rep you know, the number of representatives from, from each industry speaking at the meeting. I, I mean, I think as long as there's, we have guidelines that it's the same for both industries and it's adhered to, no, no issues. I mean, I think what's important is that this committee gets all the information and that the public gets a chance to, you know, I, I think we, in the past we've also had written comments, written public comments allowed. Mm -hmm. So anyone could submit those, but for the public comments, I think we need to develop just a guideline, uh, Mr. Chairman, that, you know, whether it's, 10 or five or 400, whatever it is, people that will speak for each side and the number of minutes they get. And, you know, I think you did a very good job of adhering to the time, the time frame for, for the most part, uh, mm -hmm. be better than Chris Wallace did at the last debate. So <laughs> kudos to you. Uh, that's all. I think, I think as long yeah. as we, it's organized like it was last time, I think it, it'll be fine. Okay. Agreed. I think it went very well the last meeting that we had a meeting, at the, you know, with the public comments. So yeah, I think that's that'll work again this year. 
Okay. All right. So, and are we limiting the time to an hour or two hours or an hour? So. I'm trying to remember. What did it, yeah. what was it last year? How long did it take? I'm trying to remember. I, th I think we gave each person three or four minutes. Four minutes, yes. Four yes. minutes max. Yeah. Yep. So if, if we do an hour, that's only yeah. 15 yeah. or less than four, four, four minutes. Yeah. So yep. it's, you know, 15 or, or fewer people. So maybe, I think we did an hour and a half. Actually. I think it was an hour and a half. Yeah. I was just, yep. I was trying to say that we did an hour and a half. So, so maybe four minutes and 10 people from each side. That's 20, that's 80 minutes. That gives a little in between wiggle time to, you know, Right. Tell someone to be quiet and get the next person aboard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's reasonable. So 10 representatives from each industry, each speaking up to four minutes each. Makes sense. That, that sounds very reasonable. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And then just the time on that. On January 27th, do we want to? I, the last one was at 10 a.m. Um, I, I just don't know our schedule. Typically, we have an agenda setting meeting at uh, on Wednesday at 10 a.m. every yep. other Wednesday. I don't think we've planned out far enough. Okay. Uh, that, that, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's actually the day before a scheduled commission meeting day, so we won't have an agenda right. setting meeting. We shouldn't. Thank you for that. Perfect. So 10 a.m. works then. Thank you for that uh, clarity. I don't have anything on my calendar yet. 10, 10 a.m. works for me. Okay. Mr. Umbrello? Nope. Oh, sorry. I was, thought I was on mute. Nope. That's acceptable. Okay. Works on my end, too. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. All right. So we'll look then to have the public comment meeting on January 27th. 2021 at 10 a.m. and we'll okay. for an hour and a half. Okay. I'm sorry. Did someone have a comment? Okay. All right. All right. And then uh, the next item then would be the um, executive summary submission uh, deadline uh, or timeline. So based on that. Um, with respect to the, uh, the, the two representatives, Mr. Attorney Goldberg and Mr. Umbrello, um, I think there was some comment about whether it's towards the end of February. Yeah, uh, maybe third or third, I think we talked about, or so, yeah, third week in February probably gives us time. The end of February, I mean. Okay. So then you're looking yeah. at February 19th? Uh, I would prefer the 26th if possible. I'm hoping considering this is my first meeting, Mr. Goldberg might give me that week. And I'm only saying that I think isn't that, again, school vacation and I'm still concerned about numbers coming in from Alex if they run late. But again, if it's a placeholder and the numbers adjust, I guess we can still shift it. I just think it looking at schedules now. Okay. We're talking about February. Week of the 22nd yeah. through the 26th. Yeah, so if you conclude it on Friday, it'd be uh, Friday, February 26th. So that's a month after the public comment meeting, is that right? Yes, yeah, that would be. That gives us um, two and a half weeks before the start of racing. Two and a half weeks. So if we give the committee, right? No, you're talking about uh, February 26th? February, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. hold on. Yeah. So February, February 26th. For this, just, and this is just for the submission of the executive summaries. Okay, I, I, I think I skipped a month. Okay. February 25th and tomorrow, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm March. saying, plenty. March. Right, then we can have our meeting. 
in right. In that, that, meeting, you know, March 10th or okay. yeah, 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. Yep, that gives you four weeks before the racing season. So you've got your wiggle room built in if you need it. So then for the, so is, is February 26th agreed for a submission timeline? It's fine, it's fine with me. Okay. Right. Yeah. I will, I, I will defer to Mr. Umbrello. How's that, Paul? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And <laughs> February, 20, 20, February 26th is acceptable. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. I already and won then, one. I'm on a good start. I won one. <laughs> and then the uh, meeting to review the executive summaries. Now, Mr. Chairman, is that when you say the review? That's that's a meeting to review, and if there's if there's going to be a vote, if there's going to be a vote, not saying that there necessarily will or won't be, but if there is that meeting, will happen at that time. You're not suggesting another meeting after that, are you? Or are no, you? No, no. I was saying that that yeah. I my thought process was to review it um, and then you and know, discuss whether it and discuss it whether there's a need for any sort of change at that time, so. Okay. That's great. I think you said it too, week of the 15th, right? Three weeks in between. So March 10th. March 10th gives us okay. two weeks, right. I think. Yeah, 10th of the 17th. T 10th is fine. Okay. 10th works. Commissioner Cameron? Uh, yeah, it looks fine for me. Okay, um, Go ahead. I mean, it, I mean, in all likelihood, all the, these meetings that we're talking about are going to be WebEx meetings. Yes. Is that, I mean, is that's pretty much, I think we're resigned to that fact, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah, the 10th tenth works. Tenth works. Okay. Traffic won't be bad. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Umbrello, are you okay with the 10th? Tenth? Uh, 10th tenth works as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Chair. Right. Okay. What, what, what time are we talking for that meeting, Mr. Chair? Okay. And uh, I guess, Shara, does that conflict with any other meetings for the commission? No, there are no conflicts at all. Okay. So would we say it does 10 a.m. work? That's, that's, that's fine. It does. Okay. Mr. Umbrello? That's fine. And Emily? Yep, that works. Okay. All right. So then the executive summary review meeting would then be March 10th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Do we want to reserve two hours, Mr. Chair? What, what are your thoughts there? An hour and a half? What, what, what do we think? Yeah, I, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the last meeting went, um, I think, somewhere around two and a half hours or so. So I think, you know, um, two, you know, we should reserve at least two hours. So. Okay. I think if we limit the amount of time each lawyer can talk, you know, we'll we'll do it in two hours. <laughs> okay. right. well, that's not really fair. Mr. Umbrella is not a lawyer. I take that back. Thank I you. That. I retract that statement. And I was going to say, if I stay on, you guys are in trouble. I can talk all day long. <laughs> Mr. Goldberg, I miss uh, seeing you at the meeting and laughing at your jokes. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This time. <laughs> All right, and then uh, just in uh, conclusion, then just are there any you know the the agenda items for that particular meeting? Um, you know, we can have the review of the the, the, the funds, uh, a racing update, uh, the schedule that for that year, um, a legislative update, uh, and then have the executive 
summary presentations and discussion of the executive summaries. So I just wondered if anyone else has any other agenda items that they would want addressed at that particular meeting. I mean, does it make sense at all? I'm just thinking out loud. Does it make sense at all to schedule a short meeting prior to that April, March 10th meeting to do that, to do that work and then okay. keep the 3 10 21 meeting just for executive summary review. I'm just throwing it out there. My, so, so we don't go two and a half hours. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe the week before just a short meeting, an hour meeting to review the uh, legislative updates and might okay. also give the committee a little yeah. extra background. Okay. Just throwing it out there. It's, well, I just, I wonder if um, because we are not spending the time this year to talk about um, the split and, you know, how to put those three buckets together differently, um, I just wonder if we would need that extra time knowing that's not part of this. Oh, yeah, we clearly won't need that much time as we did last year, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt, but I wasn't, I didn't know if I was going to get into it on this call as well, but everything should go hopefully swimmingly a lot smoother and easier, in my opinion. And the legislative update usually is not that long a, um, a list of, uh, uh, of items to discuss. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, one meeting's fine with me. I just was throwing it out there if the committee somehow wanted, you know. But that's it's it's perfectly fine. I I can meet for five hours if we have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is the consent is that the the the, the pre meeting then, um, you know, we we should be able to accomplish everything uh, within those those two hours based on those agenda items. I believe we can do that, Mr. Chair. Yes. Right. Okay. I, I agree. Okay. And are there any other agenda items that any of the committee members um, want to address for purposes of what they may um, want to hear at that meeting? So. No. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. Nothing at this time. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So um, we've obviously, uh, you know, thank you to everyone. We've we've um, been able to set a schedule up. So hopefully it, it works for. I mean, it seems like it's going to work for everybody. So um, so I'm glad about that. Uh, is there any other business that uh, any of the committee members feel need to be addressed at this time? Not this time. Okay. All right. All right. Seeing none, then, um, do I have a? Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. <laughs> All right. And again, we have to take a uh, roll call vote on that. So. Attorney Katunek? Aye. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Mr. Umbrello? Aye. Attorney Goldberg? Aye. And Fitzgerald is aye. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you for Thanks, time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. All right. Bye, thank everybody. you, everyone.